Okay, students, so I've got my pictures on my, uh, in my pictures library. You can put them anywhere as long as you remember where they are. And in order to get these set up, we're going to go into Adobe Premiere. Now, if this isn't on your desktop, it might be in your applications. Regardless, you're looking for Adobe Premiere Elements 11. So double click on that. It's going to give you two options once it loads to get into Organizer or Video Editor. And Video Editor is what you will choose every single time. Sometimes you'll come back to an existing project, but for this purpose, you're going to do a new project. It'll open up into sometimes what's uh, an, an easy mode or an expert mode. And I'd like you to get used to expert mode. So you can see that we have quick and expert. Click on expert. And where you're going to be putting these uh, these images is into your project assets. So these are all the things that um, can possibly go into your audio, whether it's a song or talking or any kind of video or image clips. Now probably the simplest way to get all of the pictures that you've taken into here is just to drag and drop, but Premiere has uh, an automatic um, setting for when you import a still image and that can be changed in preferences. So if you go into preferences, take a look at general. Right now mine says one frame because I just changed it to that, but usually it says 150 frames, which at 30 frames a second is five seconds. There's no way we want our stop motion animation to take five seconds per image. so. Change that down to one frame. If you want to change the video transition default duration from 30 frames a second to less than that, uh, feel free. You can do it 24, you can do it 15 for a, a stop motion animation, and that can be changed later as well. So stick this down to one frame for a still image default duration. Press OK. Again, that's in Edit, Preferences, General. And uh, when you dump your pictures into this Project Assets area, you will be able to see how long they are by this time code. So you've got zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and only one frame. So now that they're all available to us in our project assets, we can drag them down onto the timeline. Again, click on the first one, shift click on the last one. That's what lets you select a bunch at once. And uh, I did this quick, so I hope that it'll be somewhat effective. But you just drag it down onto the timeline. Video 1 is a fairly typical layer to start with. And it'll appear like there's a lot of, there's almost nothing there. But that's just because you're zoomed way out from the clips, so or the frame. So this zoom scroll bar will let you zoom in on wherever the scrubber is placed. So since the scrubber, this blue thing here with the triangle on top, is placed or the home plate is uh, is placed above the uh, right at the beginning of the of the video. We just zoom in, keep zooming until you see those frames in a comfortable order. So you can see that my animation is only going to be about one second long. There's there, that means I took 30 or so frames. So let's click this little triangle to get project assets out of our site, and uh, you can press the space bar to see how this looks. little too fast. Let's render it first. Rendering helps you apply what change you made to it. So this green bar shows that it has been rendered. If you see a change to one of these clips, it's uh, because it has not, uh, and, and it turns orange, it's because it hasn't been really thought through how that change is going to be made yet as it uh, previews the video for you. So, so you can scrub through, see if you're doing things right, and uh, if you like the look of that, then um, seems a little too fast for me. I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'm going to right-click, time stretch, and this is how you would change the timing of your clips if you hadn't done the edit preferences general and change the default still image time to one frame. So because I've set these to one frame, let's let's change this to longer than one second. Let's extend it to three seconds and see if the if that's working at a pace that I um, prefer. This might be choppy because I haven't rendered it, but that's okay. 
and you'll see maybe some clips in here that that or frames in here that you don't want like for instance at the end here my the ball kind of um begins to roll up so it's rolling along the side and then it takes a jump up i don't like that so much so this would be a good time for me to click con click on it press delete click on the clip that i don't want press delete all right and you'll notice as i go you can see where i squashed and stretched in order to get let me just zoom out a little bit you can see where i squashed squashed and stretched in order to get the effects that it it's really uh it hit the ceiling it blobbed its way down it hit the ground with a squash it bounced back up with a bit of a stretch turned back to normal and then fell on its own and just kind of rolled on the ground for a second i mean not exactly professional but uh i think it conveys a little bit of the the idea so that's how you do it um when you're ready to uh publish it or actually create the video uh, right now you're just editing the video you need to actually create it by publishing you go up to publish and share click on publish and share go to you're going to publish it to a computer exporting a file you can see on another computer now you get a bunch of options adobe flash video so that can be seen on on uh youtube for instance uh mpegs are a fairly universal type of uh format then there's QuickTime for Macs. Um, you can even just export still images or just audio from uh, videos, Windows Media. AVI, in case you want to use it again uh, in another video that you're editing. AVCHD is a, is a kind of um, a tricky format. I would st stay clear of it for the moment. And then MPEG is, uh, is what we'll choose. NTSC DVD standard is the preset. And uh, you can choose this one here, the HD 720p30. Uh, the difference between PAL and NTSC, NTSC is kind of a North American standard. PAL is kind of for the UK and, the, and Europe. So stick to NTSC stuff. That's why this one that has 30 frames per second uh, or frame rate of 29.97 um, is uh, the TV standard for us. Now it does save as an MPEG type file. So... There you go. It'll be fairly universal. It's in high def. You could also choose uh, like strong, even bigger high def, um, but you don't need major file size like that. Even NTSC DVD standard um, 720 by 480 for our purposes would be fine. I'm going to stick to the HD. So before we save, we just need to make sure that our uh, always double check presets my file name. Forgot my file name. So here we are putting our last name first dash our first name dot our first name dash whatever it is so black clay ball test save it in the place that you want to have it saved so I think you guys might want to submit it to me and uh, that would be on computer for students in down to media art and assignment 3.2 squash and stretch practice okay so that's good uh, share work bar uh, area only refers to when you have this slider this determines how long the movie is actually going to be so if if it's over here and you publish it after this moment there's still going to be a little bit of a time of just blackness which could be kind of awkward so i'm sure you guys have all seen youtube videos that that don't make sure this uh is snugged up right to next to the last clip so that's what that's referring to okay so that's that's all ready to go and you press save and it'll render first to make sure these orange bars are uh kind of applied and when you're done you can press done and if you want, you can try saving it in a different file format just to see what the difference would look like. So I hope that's a good uh, example of what you guys might be doing. And uh, follow along. Please pause when you need to. And uh, I wish you success.